All right. Good morning. Uh, great, great to be here. I'm Tim Latimer, the co-founder and CEO of Fervo Energy. Um, by way of background, I started my career about a decade ago in the oil and gas industry, working as a drilling engineer in South Texas, right when the shale boom took off. And uh, I uh, really enjoyed that work. It was one, during one of the biggest technology innovation cycles in energy that's happened over the last several decades. Uh, but the more interested I became in climate change, the more I wanted to take my career in a new direction. And when I learned about geothermal energy, I became incredibly excited about it as a place that needed the skills of drilling engineers, uh, needed that kind of geoscience background. But when I looked deeply into it, I realized that even though that we'd gone through this huge technology transformation in the way we drill wells for oil and gas in the United States, um, that the geothermal industry had been drilling wells the same way for 30 plus years. And it was ripe for disruption, for closing that technology transfer gap. Uh, and that's where the idea of Fervo was born. So, um, you know, 10 years later, you know, took through uh, time at, at uh, Stanford for graduate school where my co-founder was doing his PhD in geothermal reservoir engineering, launched the company, spent some time incubating through the Activate program at the Lawrence Berkeley National Lab. We've now raised a couple hundred million dollars in uh, venture capital financing and DOE financing. And we're off to the races with this idea of, of really bringing new technology to open up the geothermal sector. And I'm excited to talk to you all about it today. Um, I can just wing it if, if, if the slides aren't, aren't coming up. I'm happy to do that. Oh, there we go. Excellent. Okay, so I think we've got a fairly informed audience here. I'm going to assume that everyone here uh, is interested and passionate about solving climate change and also recognizes that technology can play a big role in it. So I won't belabor those points. What I will tell you, though, is at least in the world of geothermal, is it's happening right now, which is quite exciting. I think there's a lot of trends that people have been looking at for a long time. You know, one is just talking about how clean energy is bought. You know, back 20 years ago, um, it was all about producing fossil fuels and then buying offsets. Then, then these goals of averaging out your annual consumption through 100% renewable energy launched and gained popularity in the 2010s. Uh, the 2020s have been the decade so far of 24-7 carbon-free energy. So the most forward-thinking and ambitious groups, the ones I've listed here, Google, Walmart, the California Public Utility Commission, even the U.S. federal government, have now adopted a new and much more stringent goal, which is doing 24-7 carbon-free electricity, which is a big difference from averaging out your annual consumption, actually matching hour by hour, and requires new technology. And so here's a study from Rocky Mountain Institute that looks at why. You know, if your goal is to get to 20 or 30 percent decarbonization, which is where most renewable portfolio standards were five years ago, you can do that through wind and solar, and you can get even higher if you add batteries. But again and again, what we're seeing in studies is that if our goal is complete decarbonization, there needs to be a role for firm, clean power on the grid, because costs start going up exponentially as you get to higher and higher penetration rates of, of renewables. Um, and each of these studies show that there's a role for clean firm to play that can actually deliver a lower overall system cost, where if we get 20 to 40 percent of our electricity from a resource that can work around the clock and all the time, it makes achieving this fully decarbonized grid possible. And so what we're seeing is this, this trend is recent, uh, it's m gaining a lot of momentum, and it's really benefiting geothermal specifically. So geothermal is one of the resources that can produce carbon-free electricity 24-7. Um, and, you know, among other things, after the rolling blackouts that occurred in California in 2020, the California Public Utility Commission created a carve-out and a mandate for 100 uh, percent carbon-free power. And the way it's defined, basically, geothermal is the only way they can get there. And so we went through a period over the last decade where there was little interest in geothermal. When we started the company in 2017, um, no one believed there were going to be buyers, and no one believed, you know, really took deep decarbonization seriously. But now, because of these recognition of these problems, we're seeing huge momentum and push into geothermal. So we went from only having one uh, power purchase agreement signed sector-wide through the last five years of the 2010s to, I need to update my slide, probably about, there's been over 20 now new power purchase agreements signed just in the last two years as more and more power buyers tur turn to these contracts. And Fervo's played a big role in that. Last year, as part of Google's 24-7 carbon-free initiative, we announced a deal to do um, uh, the first ever corporate deal for uh, advanced geothermal energy development as part of their, to power their data centers in Nevada, which we're quite excited about. Just this year, we've announced about 100 megawatts of new power purchase agreements we've done with California Power Buyers, East Bay Community Energy, and the Clean Power Alliance. And so the market for firm clean power has arrived after all this time we've been talking about it, uh, and it's here in a really big way. So what are we going to do about it? You know, geothermal is a technology that's been around for 
uh, nearly um, 50 years, actually 100 years ago was the first power plant. The first one that came online in the U.S. was the geysers in Northern California in the 1960s. So it's been around for a while, but it's always been capped and limited in how much it can grow. So just a little bit of a primer on how geothermal works. Uh, you drill deep wells down into very high temperature geology. This is often you know, several, you know, 300, 400, 500 degrees Fahrenheit or higher. Um, you pump cold water down injection wells. It sweeps across the geothermal reservoir. It returns in production wells, and you can capture that heat at the surface to power a turbine to generate electricity. So this is great where you have it. You know, a country like Kenya gets over 50% of its power from uh, geothermal electricity. Iceland and New Zealand get huge amounts of their power from uh, clean electricity. Northern California's got the biggest geothermal plant in the world. But what we've learned over time is as we've expanded beyond these little geologic hotspots that work perfectly and into deeper and deeper reservoirs, technology hasn't kept up. And so geothermal typically stagnates in each country after, after the best resources are, are, are accessed. And the main reason for that is that even though it's per fairly trivial to identify hot geology to, to target, it's actually very difficult to find the right reservoir conditions that allow you to flow through that reservoir and get the right surface area and flow rate requirements so you need to actually extract meaningful amounts of heat. And the stat I put on there, about one out of three wells are dry holes. And so these wells might be $5 million endeavors to drill, so if one out of three times you do it, you don't come up with anything, it's not really great from a financing business model case study case. So if geothermal really wants to continue advancing and move beyond a niche energy resource, the key thing you need to solve is the repeatability, and you're going to do that by accessing higher flow rates and surface area per well that you drill. So this is where we get into looking at something that uh, borrows quite heavily from the innovations in the oil and gas industry over the last decade, several decades. Um, and here we talk about a new approach that Fervo is working on where we drill horizontal wells for geothermal, much like the oil and gas industry does. And then rather than just having uh, reliance on the natural uh, geology itself, you can create fractures that drive in between those injection and production wells and really deliver highly consistent flow rates, enormous amounts of surface area, um, and a broad setting of geologic characteristics and get the opportunity to open up geothermal power using these technologies the same way that shale oil and gas got opened up over a decade ago. And so this is uh, another view. This is one of our simulation softwares that we run to, to design these projects. What you're looking at here for a sense of scale is a software simulation of what's actually happening in the subsurface. If you're looking da straight down, perhaps 10,000 feet straight down, uh, for wells that are drilled 10,000 feet down, 5,000 feet over. And what we're doing here is rather than just having one point between injection and production wells, which is how all geothermal has been done to date, we actually can isolate that well into hundreds of different dis discrete zones and then flow across that reservoir from the injection well to the production well in a way that's order of, as a, orders of magnitude more efficient than what's been done before for geothermal development. And this can finally open up the resource to being uh, viable even when you move outside of these hot spots in Iceland or Northern California and just into better geologies, you know, like projects we're developing right now in Nevada and Utah. So this is leveraging a lot of in innovation from the oil and gas industry, like horizontal drilling. Uh, we also use a lot of distributed fiber optic sensing to measure in real time at high resolution the fluid flow down in the subsurface. Um, and so a lot of our innovation is not inventing these tools from scratch, but figuring out how to take what's already been done in the oil and gas industry and make the drill bits and the motors and the data collection tools work in bigger wells, higher temperature wells, harder geologies, and advancing that forward. But, but we're building off this huge base of innovation to get started. Um, I'm also happy to say this isn't just theoretical. Uh, here's a shot of the drilling rig that we actually just had wrap up drilling our first project, which is a three-well project in northern Nevada. Um, that we concluded drilling a couple weeks ago. We'll be commissioning this plant and bringing power online from it um, early next year, which we're quite excited about. And this is what you're looking at is just a diagram and schematic of the wells we've drilled. We've drilled two wells here that we're going to pair as an inject injection production pair. And like I described earlier, to get a sense of scale, these are about 10,000 feet deep. We go down 10,000 feet, drill 5,000 feet over, and we cross flow between these two wells in a way that uh, allows us to have much more um, uh, efficient production than any geothermal that's happened before. And the reason we're doing this is that the geothermal prize is huge. You know, there's no real limit to how much heat there is beneath our feet. Uh, whenever the Department of Energy has looked at this, um, even using assumptions from a few years ago, and the technology for drilling has advanced quite a bit, you know, they outlined a very clear roadmap to get 100 plus gigawatts online by mid-century uh, here in the U.S. using these technology advancements. And if you think back to what I talked about before, you know, what we're looking at in this clean firm resource is can we get to that 20% level that we know the grid needs to complement wind, solar, and batteries to get to fully decarbonized, and there's more than enough geothermal if we get the technology right to make that happen. 
Um, and so this could be the missing key that allows us to have a completely decarbonized energy sector. Um, and with the momentum from the major technology advancements, the huge influx of venture capital financing, the Inflation Reduction Act, which puts us at parity with wind and solar for the first time from a tax credit standpoint in over a decade, uh, the momentum in the sector is huge and, and geothermal is taking off in a really exciting way. So thanks for letting me come and speak at Ecomodernism. Modernism.